Hello everyone! Today I want to rank every single map and mode combination in Splatoon 3, including the brand new maps from the Fresh Season update. This is going to be my perspective as a competitive player and competitive tier list. In solo queue, the maps would be a little bit different, but for the most part, this list is still going to be pretty accurate, honestly. Anyway, subscribe if you enjoy and let's get started. So, the funny thing about Eel Tail is originally I had the map modes ranked a lot higher. I believe Eel Tail was originally in C, but right now it is in E tier. So what happened to make this so much worse? Well, the main problem with this map is it's very difficult to retake if the opponents have the bridge, and they actually just straight up made this problem worse in the most recent update because the left side is now a one-way drop with no way for defenders to back up, making it much easier for attackers to hold map control and making the map feel worse in every mode but Rainmaker where that wasn't changed. Zones is pretty similar, the objective is a little bit worse, and the bridge is a little bit worse, but the special advantage makes it a bit easier to retake. Tower control is just straight up even worse, the attacker's special advantage on a map mode that's so easy to lock out, as well as a tower path that does not lead to any new and unique approach options makes it one of the worst map modes in the game right now. Uh, at least Rainmaker is pretty fine though. I would put this in a solid C tier, honestly. It is definitely the mode where the map works the most. The bridge means the routes you have to push with the Rainmaker are actually pretty varied. There's two splits that work quite well. And because the attacking team has to drop and go pretty far forward to get the Rainmaker ahead, it moves them off the bridge and allows defenders to retake easily. It is still a very lockout heavy map where the bridge controls a lot of space with incredibly limited and visible approach routes, but at least this mode is somewhat decent at it. Hacklefish is a lot better of a start. I'd say in zones it's also in C tier. The main problem with this is that the right route, while at least allowing you to get an angle, is incredibly weak in this mode. You kind of have to do this really awkward jump or go all the way around, and what you can do down there is very limited. And on top of that, the charger spot on the tent can see all three flanks and control all of them really easily. At least the map has good sides, and getting out of your base isn't too tricky either, so it still falls into a decent category, but the routes around mid just really need buffs. Rainmaker is pretty much the exact same problems, and the objective doesn't really change too much, whereas on Clam Blitz there's an extra route to get to the tents on the enemy side to score, but it also makes it a bit more lockout heavy, so I'd rank these modes as even. Tower controls definitely step up though, because that right route I mentioned earlier is actually way better in tower control, and on top of that, since the tower goes to the side, it pulls defenders onto that same side, making retakes easier. This is definitely the map mode where Hagglefish flows the best, and shows it's really close to being a good map mode with a few changes. I'll make mincemeat fast. It is definitely the worst overall map in the game, and in fact, literally every mode on it is going to go down here. All of these has horrible entrance routes, just very little ways to move around the map, it is extremely long range and special spam orientated, and none of the map modes really do anything to enhance it whatsoever. There's really nothing else to say. Let's get the worst defender of Undertow out of the way, zones. I have no idea why the zones are these two tiny, easily contestable little bits in the middle, but it absolutely trashes the mode right from the get-go. On top of that, because Zones is more focused around the middle of the map, the part that's cramped with literally only one way through, it quite literally brings out the worst of this map. Clam Blitz is at least a decent step up, moving you a little bit further away, but has the same problems. And keep in mind, both of these map modes have a problem of getting back to your base is a pain because there is an uninkable and a sponge that is awkward to climb on as your only ways back. Tower Control is at least a lot better. This is the mode where the map really opens up because the objective takes you out of mid, which allows it to be played in the area that's actually much better. This still has some problems where the tower route is a little bit awkward, and it's still very weird for defenders to be able to back off, and of course the mid is still not great, but it's an objective that allows the map to thrive a little bit better. Undertow Rainmaker does a similar thing to tower control, but even better. An entire corner of the map gets expanded to put a checkpoint there, allowing attackers and defenders to rotate through it, and pushing people even even further away from the horrible mid of this map. On top of that, while it is two Rainmaker Pass you have to commit to, they're very unique in how they're approached. The right route is a quick checkpoint or a quick breakaway, but is incredibly difficult to actually get up the ramp due to how slow it is. The left route, while significantly safer and leading to a few interesting splits of its own, takes a lot more time and thus is more situational that way. It's a map that allows teams to approach it differently based on their playstyle, and that's really cool. Scorch Zones is arguably the worst map 
map mode this game has ever made. I have no idea why the only way back to your base is a great path. Like, not even a single sponge for your team to go backward on. It is incredibly awkward to move on, and you're basically just funneling into a bowl the entire game. Scorch Tower Control is already a good bit better. On every other mode, there's this ramp on the left side that teams can use to push or defend, which makes it flow a lot better. Still though, once it gets into your base, you realize it's another bowl that's extremely easy for attackers to lock out on since they have high ground and the defending routes are extremely weak. Rainmaker and Clam Blitz have the same problem, but flow a little bit better, especially since these modes have the Great Bridge, but going toward your base, where it's a bit easier to use. These give a little bit of dynamics with the paths, and the specials as well as the passive special advantage fit the best in this mode, so it flows a little bit better than on Tower Control. Uh, Brine Zones is pretty bad. It's arguably one of the most special dependent things in the entire game. The map is incredibly small, the flank is really bad, and the right defending route out of spawn is incredibly awful as well, including a literal wall to block any long range weapon and a drop that you cannot get back up from where a single suction will move you. Rainmaker and Tower Control are even worse. If the map size wasn't a problem enough, imagine being locked out with passive special advantage working against you as the tower moves up to toward your base. Or you can try in Rainmaker, where you have one route to push, as well as the sides of the map turning into one of the most annoying stall spots in the game. Luckily, this map has a saving grace, Clam Blitz. They add a rail on this map to the bottom, making the flank instead of just kind of a little bit of an awkward way to get into mid, an actual real flank that goes all the way behind enemies. It is still very situational, but that alone gives a lot more options to the map. On top of that, this is definitely the objective that flows best, forcing teams out of the middle of the map, but not far enough to where they're going to be spawn locking you. Still has a lot of problems, but at least makes the map work a little bit better. Like with Hagglefish, Umami zones and clam bloods definitely makes the best out of a hallway map. Honestly, this is pretty similar to Brinewater in a way, where it has a bottom left kind of fake flank route that's an alternate way into mid that can be a bit too situational if enemies push too far, and a right route for defending your spawn that's a little bit weak. The difference is, these routes are both better on this map, and on top of that, the middle of this map is actually really good. It has its own sense of unique terrain that you can push in from from different angles and cover and even an inkable wall. Yes, once the enemy team pushes up to your spawn and the defending routes out of it are gone, it becomes a lot more miserable, but whenever it doesn't get there, it's not too big of a problem, and in these modes, it honestly allows the map to flow pretty well as a whole. If you were able to just get out of your spawn a little bit better, and the roots were a little bit wider, I could see this being way higher. Unfortunately, Tower and Rainmaker do not work for this. As I've stated that the mid is the best part of the map for this, the objectives that take you to the enemy spawn become an immediate problem. Once the tower gets around the second checkpoint or Rainmaker a bit past the first one, not only is it clear just how short the objective path is, but the two routes out of your spawn become absolutely horrible, making it just so that you have to run at the tower and pray once it gets far enough. Yeah, weak spawn regions really do not work on small maps on Tower and Rainmaker, and unfortunately this is one of the worst defenders. Splatoon 2 does not start on the best note here, with D tier for Inkblot Zones. Honestly, this is probably the most overrated map mode in the entire game in my opinion. There is only one route to get off your plat that you can go back on, and it's an uninkable ramp that's incredibly situational. The left flank is a one-way drop that is incredibly easy to see and doesn't even get far behind people, and the right side is nearly inaccessible coming from your base, and even if you do get there, doesn't really get you any closer to the objective. The top mid high ground makes it exceptionally easy to lock out on, and it becomes a matter of an attacking team just sitting on your plat with ranged weapons walling you out. Hey, it could be worse, it could be Rainmaker, where you have one route to push, the sides become annoying stall spots, and it becomes one of the most unfun Rainmaker maps in history because you just have no freedom. It is one path the entire way. The only split you have is going up near the top of the map on the ramp, and it's a complete throw route that just gives the Rainmaker to the enemies. I don't have anything else to say, it's the most linear Rainmaker map that also features a prominent stalling spot. That's just not fun. Clam Blitz and Tower Control are a lot better. There is now a rail to approach Plat from the left side, and there's a second way to get off of your Plat with an inkable block, or in this case, a ramp. This opens up the map a lot more. It is still very small and cramped near the middle of the map and the sides are still relatively weak, 
but it opens up a good bit of options. And when you get control, having the option to flank on that rail, even if it's a difficult route, is still imposing and forces the defending team to deal with it. I'd say the main flaw of this map mode is that because of its small size and clam spawns, it's very easy for the attacking team to snowball one push out of control. Tower control doesn't have that problem, and that makes it our first S tier on this list. Outside of the objective fitting a little bit better, it's practically identical to Clam Blitz. It still has some problems with a really annoying second checkpoint that forces everyone to fight in that awkward choke, and the tower path after that becomes very easy for attackers to lock out on, but honestly, it's nowhere near as bad as other maps we've ranked already. Mako, or Mako, depending on how you like to pronounce it, is also off to a strong start, with zones being pretty good, honestly. This map mainly flows with the left side that you're able to go forward and backward on and has a stack for attacking teams to get control of, either allowing you to go on the stack to the left of it or the right through mid. The spawn area on this map is also great, very wide on both the left and right sides that allow you to get out of that area pretty easily and even lets you get pretty close to the left stack, making it very nice for defenders. The main flaw of this map is the right way out of spawn. It is horrible for attackers to push through as it takes you straight into a low ground court and it's almost impossible to back up from. Again, it's still there, so the fact that the route exists means there is some amount of pressure and care that has to be taken for the defenders to watch it, but that does eventually lead to problems at higher levels. Clam Blitz is incredibly similar to Zones, just with an objective that works a little bit worse on it due to how small the map is, but that is really it. Tower Control also fits this map quite well, as the tower allows the left side of the map to be more useful with the tower jump to get across, and it means that the stacks is an easier route to push through since the objective forces teammates to the other side. The reason it's not better than Zones though, on the other hand, is because after the second checkpoint, the tower moves to a very awkward position for defenders to get to, and since it moves away away from your spawn, it's very easy for attackers to KO the match. Finally is Rainmaker, which I'd put in B. The main problem here is that the spawn region is a lot worse in this map mode, and rotating to deal with the left side push from attackers is a bit of a problem. But outside of that, it's really good. The right side is still a fast breakaway route that can work for a quick checkpoint, and the left side, while definitely better for attackers, still has a lot of ground for defenders to be able to take advantage of. Mako is your solid map mode. It's good pretty much everywhere, and a little bit more than good in a few modes. Pretty nice. I'll get Wahoo out of the way fast. This map is not great. The bridge is closed half the time, which is the only real way to get into the map. The spinner rotating underneath is incredibly difficult to actually get through and very easy to see since the carousel is, well, see-through. And the limited flank, if you can even call it that, on the left side is easy to stop and the right route is not much better. Zones and tower are better slightly, and I mean slightly. The main difference in these modes is that the left side is a constant two-way route, being a little bit more awkward in tower control than zones, but not enough to make a significant difference. It has a pole now? Oh, you're right. It does have a pole in zones now, but unfortunately, as godly as the Wahoo World pole is, it is not enough to move it up into D tier. I'm sorry, guys. It might have a pole. Actually, pole and a timer? That, that might be pretty insane, honestly. Maybe we'll debate it in the future. Sturgeon Zones and Tower are honestly really even to me. The map's main problem across the modes is that the left side is absolutely awful to approach on when you get into mid, and it can be a little bit lockout heavy. Zones has the defending special advantage, but the left route sucks. While Tower Control has the attacking special advantage, the tower goes over the left route, making the right and mid routes way better, and so it flows more nicely until you get to the second checkpoint, from there it becomes a bit of a problem. Rainmaker is a little bit worse, nothing really helps the left side problem, and on top of that, the two routes that you can go with for the Rainmaker are so spread out that teams will just stack whichever side you go to. There is very little freedom there. I guess after the first checkpoint, if you go on the low ground, there's a little bit of a dilemma, but usually it's pretty clear which one of these two you are going to choose. It could be worse though. Clam Blitz on this map is absolutely awful. Not only is it very easy for attackers to lock out from, but you can score power clams on the spinner and snipe, making it incredibly easy to score basically for free if you get mid control. The objective here is incredibly annoying and the places it can be scored in are just not well balanced. Mansa is unique in that every single mode is actually in a different tier. Very difficult to rank. 
Zones is your average C tier. It is a map where you have to be forced to go through mid, where the right route becomes a one-way drop. However, it does still have a unique amount of ways to approach the enemy side from mid, in terms of you can go on the high ground, the low ground on the wall, the right flank, or push to the left side. The right side is also useful for defenders to get back in, it's just when you're actually trying to get into zone, that being a one-way drop becomes a bit of a problem. It's basically your average zones map to me, and I think it plays fine in this game. Mansa tower control just got worse. The block on the right side being gone just sucks, because normally that first part of the map played out really well and back and forth, and it was the second part that struggled with the attackers having the special advantage as well as the tower getting to the left side of your spawn, where it's really hard to defend due to the limited routes. Now, the entire map feels claustrophobic the entire time, because you can't drop to defend the first checkpoint, so you better have specials to play around because that's how the map is going to be for the entire time. Rainmaker didn't get completely gutted. Yes, the block is still gone, but the checkpoint is close enough and there the entire time to where defenders have some option to back up from. And honestly, being able to use that right side as defenders makes it so much easier to deal with. On top of that, the Rainmaker Pass aren't that gutted by the checkpoint placement either, since after the first checkpoint you can jump and use the side of the map as a route, so it feels mostly intact if just a little bit worse. And honestly, Clam Blitz is pretty damn good on this map. Yes, the only map where the block is there is where it's good. In Splatoon 2, the main problem is when attackers were scoring, it was very difficult to defend. Now that that area has been significantly widened, it's way less awkward, and the extra defending options such as the rail on the right of your spawn make spawn locks a bit easier to deal with in this map than they were in Splatoon 2. Don't get me wrong, you still have to go through mid on this map, but the block means that you can go from mid to the left pretty quickly, and honestly, it feels like there's way more options to approach the stage on in this mode. Hammerhead is not off to a great start for Splatoon 1. This is literally the maps I used in my map reworks video to show how choke point heavy these maps can be. Yeah, it's a straight line that's very easy to lock out on with extremely limited routes, a bunch of one-way drops, almost no paintable walls, and it's a giant straight line. The best thing I can say about it is that the mid does have some unique terrain if you can actually manage to have a team fight there, which is why zones and clams are a little bit higher. From there, you can guess that Tower and Rainmaker, the objectives that force it to go into your base where the lockout is even easier, is where this map just becomes absolutely garbage. It's a complete shame. Removing the grades did not have to ruin this map mode, but on top of the grades, they also made the left and right routes just so much worse than they were in Splatoon 1, and that combined with the grades just killed this map. Mahi on Tower and Rainmaker were similarly gutted. These are incredibly short maps with objective paths that are unnecessarily quick that make it super attacking favored. Once you push to the checkpoint, you basically have an advantage on both of these map modes due to just how bad Mahi spawn is. On top of that, this is arguably the smallest middle of the map in the game, with the islands being nearly useless on these map modes, as well as being really poor in general, with the islands being almost completely useless on these map modes and incredibly difficult to take any form of advantage of, as well as being horrible for a route on Rainmaker. Clam Blitz is at least a little bit better, since it's not as lockout heavy as the other modes are on it, but it still has the problem of the islands being even worse in this. Until the water level drops, there's basically no reason to even go there because you can't go across. The one saving grace is once the water level does drop, the map becomes somewhat playable. The spawns are still absolutely awful, way too close together and the basket, but that's just part of the map being this small. And yet, despite how bad the other three modes are on Mahi, Mahi Zones, and Turf War if we were to talk about those, are actually really good. Now yes, the spawn region is still a problem, but here the terrain is easiest for defenders to get out of it by brute force, and on top of that the special advantage helps you the most. Outside of that, the middle of the map is actually good. The islands are a real, valuable flank both for attackers and defenders to take advantage of, you can push onto Snipe or use it as a way to get behind, and there is another route through the left side of the map. There is valuable cover everywhere, multiple routes to use, and the middle of the map flows nicely. Still nowhere near as good as Maki was in Splatoon 1, even on this map, but it flows surprisingly well in this game. Flounder will also be joining Mahi near the top of the list in zones. 
Now, yes, it can be a bit tricky to balance Flounder due to the middle of the map having the high ground, but Zones does it the best with the defending special advantage, the rail being really useful to contest Zones with bombs and having a variety of routes to get back in, with the far left side, left ramp, left walls, middle trench, right wall, and if you get through the mid trench, you can climb up onto either zone. Flounder's main strength is its variety of ridge to approach the map from, and honestly, it thrives best here in zones. Rainmaker, it's a little bit worse on due to the special advantage not being as strong, but still quite good since the defenders will need to get off the roof once the Rainmaker gets far enough. Clam Blitz is a little bit more awkward with the spawns and a bit easier for attackers to stay on the roof, but still more than usable for the roots to go around the stage that allows it to flow pretty well. Tower Control is what brings out the worst of this map though. The attacking special advantage is admittedly a problem, and while the tower path does allow the right flank to be a bit more usable, it's difficult to get there since the tunnel from your spawn is gone compared to Splatoon 1. Honestly, if there was a way to get to the far right of the map, and if the right wall was inkable, this map mode would be good, and I could see Flounder Zones being an X tier. But unfortunately, the tiny amount of nerfs it got from Splatoon 1, while not hurting it that much, are enough to make this map mode a lot worse. Finally is Museum. Zones is off to a good S tier start. It does have a bit of one way drops, but it has a fantastic right route out of spawn, which is not only a good flank that gets around mid, but also incredibly fast and easy to go to with the respawn system in this game. Lockouts aren't too tricky to deal with, the fights are very spread out, and the spinners add a unique gimmick that are very useful for this map and improve the flow of the game. Tower and Rainmaker are a little bit worse. Tower control has the problem of the tower going away from your attacking spawn, making it very easy for defenders to stall. And the left side all the way up top, which normally doesn't matter too much, is a big part of defending on this map and really shows how bad it is. Rainmaker, on the other hand, is just a little bit linear. It does still have multiple routes after the first checkpoint, if you could manage to get the jumps of the top right or left, which is pretty cool but it's still mostly very linear and the first checkpoint is just way too close. Outside of that though, it is still Museum, so it flows pretty well. Finally though, is Museum Clam Blitz, and this is the best map mode in Splatoon 3. This map adds back the flank from Splatoon 1. Even if it's not as good, the block allows you to push from the left side, and finally the map is as open as originally intended, with a left route, middle route, and right route through mid. That means it's way more flexible for both attackers and defenders, since being able to stack on the left side normally would be too far from the objective, but now can lead to an actual option. Honestly, this is easily the most open map mode in the game and way easier to move through in general, and you can definitely tell just how much better it feels than most of the other maps in this game. For as much as Splatoon 3 has nerfed a lot of map modes in this game, it's nice to see that Museum gets to be just as good as it was in Splatoon 1, but on a mode that we did not get to experience in that game, and that makes it my personal favorite as well. And that is every map mode in Splatoon 3 ranked. I hope with reworks and new stages added to the game that we get more maps on the higher up of this list, but we'll have to see. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you all next time.